Every night, I've been helping Hayden with the deployment of zooplankton nets. Now, the first thing you may ask is, yes, Marine, that's very interesting, but what is a zooplankton? Zooplankton are small organisms that drift with the current. There are different kinds of plankton. There are some that will remain plankton their whole lives, even through adulthood, and then there are some that will be plankton just for part of their lives, for example, as larvae, such as fish larvae or crab larvae. So despite their small size, zooplankton are hugely important. And this is why there are people such as Hayden that study zooplankton. Hello, my name is Hayden Close and I work for CFAS. I mainly work with plankton. These are really important for the food web dynamics and play a massive role in the food chain. As they provide lots of food for other plankton themselves, which eat each other, and also for many pelagic fish. Now there are many different kinds of zooplankton nets. The system that we're using here is a system of two nets that carry two different mesh size. It goes down to the bottom and then it comes back up and as it comes back up, it actually kind of swallows within its nets all of the zooplankton that is on its way. On the zooplankton net itself, at the mouth of the net, there is something that we call the flow meter and that actually gives us information about the volume of water that goes through the net as the net is coming back up that can then be used to determine the density of zooplankton or basically the number of zooplankton that you have per meter cubed of water. There's a particular interest in this cruise to actually focus on the ichthyoplankton and that ichthyoplankton is actually anything that is fish eggs or fish larvae. Oh my god. Wait, what are we see looking at? This, this is a larvae. <laughs> yeah, larvae with a little jellyfish hat. Is a jellyfish stuck, stuck on it? Is yeah. it eating it? Yeah, it's alive, look, it's beating. But who's eating who? Jellyfish is eating its face. No, the jellyfish is eating the face of the larvae? Yeah. That's disgusting. So uh, just above me here is um, a camera which has got a live feed to my computer just next to me. And you can actually see what I'm looking at now. So you can see there's lots of copy pods our worms, krill and little shrimps. Um, there's also lots of eggs in there but they are very transparent so they are very difficult to see. Um, if you zoom in on one, you can just about see it there. So couch just, it's got this like purple sheen to the outside and between the yolk which is here, this middle bit's the yolk, there's a large space and this is very characteristic of the sardine. Here we can see a larvae, so you, can, so you can see it's quite well developed, so this guy has been out of his egg casing for quite a little while now, and surrounded by him is lots of different copepods. The idea here is to relate the abundance of fish eggs or fish larvae with environmental factors to try and determine under which conditions does the spawning occur. There's a really big interest during this survey to try and identify the environmental conditions that are optimal for spawning. This kind of information is particularly interesting for commercially important species such as sardines because obviously we want to know how many there are and whether or not they're reproducing successfully. The cool thing with zooplankton is that there's such a diversity of organisms and they just look so weird. What I find interesting is that we give so little credit to these organisms because they are so small and yet they are absolutely crucial in life in the ocean. So on this cruise, I am not sorting any zooplankton, but Hayden's doing that work and every once in a while he finds some really cool stuff.